Don't touch this stuff, Colonel. There's danger of infection. And more danger for me than you. Yes, sir. Colonel, over here. She's dying, Colonel. Now comes the time for going into darkness. Rest and sleep. The good days have come and gone. Now I am alone. We found no warriors when we came to your village. Did they die before we got here? No. The men went to hunt. They have been gone too long. At 24, he had been the youngest general in the Civil War. Within five years, he had been reduced in rank and sent west to be forgotten. But he was not the kind of man to let the world forget. His name, George Armstrong Custer. the Sioux on a rampage to the north and the Cheyennes threatening to join up with him from the south I don't have a tenth of the troops that I need and now you say you want a troop to go chasing Pawnee blankets across the country those blankets are contaminated by smallpox sir they must be destroyed I know the danger of the spread of the disease Custer I just don't have the troops to spare Red Wolf is on his way now to the main village of the Pawnee about a hundred miles to the southwest if he reaches that village before we have a chance to intercept him, smallpox could very well wipe out the entire Pawnee Nation. Yeah, but even if I could somehow find the men, what good would it do? We're low on medical supplies. We don't have any smallpox vaccine. And I can't possibly spare the medical officer. If we could stop Red Wolf and his braves, isolate them, until the danger of infection is passed. There's one other thing, sir. What's that? Red Wolf and his braves were away hunting when the disease struck the village. He returned just as we were burying the women and children. He attacked us before we had a chance to explain. 
Red Wolf has every reason to believe that the 7th Cavalry massacred his people. But that could mean war. And a war with the Pawnee would be disastrous. It might be enough to trigger an alliance between the Sioux and the Pawnee, and that would be doubly disastrous. If we can convince the chief of the Pawnee running bear that we're trying to save his people from a plague, we might make a powerful ally. I know, Custer. And if there were men I could spare... Thank you, sir. I'll find them. Chief Crazy Horse himself. Well, I only seen him once, but that's him all right. <laughs> you know, my pa used to say that Crazy Horse would rather face a whole regiment than you and him. Oh, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> uh, your old man is exaggerating. <laughs> well, just a hair. But I do remember that Don uh, was doing the war with Mexico. Yeah, I was just a fresh meat recruit, and your old man was a regimental sergeant major. It was in a village called Ezio. Attention! Well, what? As you were. Gentlemen, I need some volunteers. I heard your last detail ran into a bit of bad luck. That's correct, Riker. How come you're the only one to get back? Alive, that is. It's been widely rumored that luck has played a very favorable part in my career. <laughs> that old lady luck. She sure got a yen for you, ain't she? Custer's luck. It's all good. Or all bad. My patrol was attacked by Red Wolf while burying some of his people who died of smallpox. Right now, Red Wolf is making his way to the main Pawnee encampment, carrying contaminated blankets and effects. The assignment is to stop him. Now, General Terry has informed me he can't spare any regular troops. And you consider us expendable? Is that it, Colonel? I consider you our only chance to prevent what could be the extermination of the Pawnee. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing out here? Exterminating the Indian? We are here to protect an expanding and growing nation. To keep the peace as best we can. You've been in the army long enough to understand that, Paul. Some of us may not return. Possibly none of us will. The tribe we're trying to help may very well be our executioners. Now, are there any volunteers? You suppose, uh, just suppose that some of us did volunteer. What do we get out of it? I can guarantee nothing. But I will make a report that should influence any court-martial board. <laughs> you think that you can influence that board enough for them to go easy on me, Colonel, sir? Your crime was mutiny and murder of an officer, Powell. That officer was insane. He would have caused the death of every man in his command. Be quiet, Billy. All right. You got yourself a volunteer. I can't let the army down after all they've done for me. Now can I? All right, Powell. A colonel. How do you know that I won't slit your throat some night and take off? I don't know. No, you don't, do you? I'll ride with you, too, sir. You stay here. Where you go, I go, Jeb. Uh, 
I don't believe I know you, boy. Billy Nixon, sir. My father was in the 5th Cavalry. He got hurt pretty bad. I had to see him. I deserted, sir. How do I know you won't desert again? Ain't got no place else to go. He died. All right. I've had time to do a lot of thinking, Colonel, since you had me busted and thrown in here. And I reckon you know that I've hated your guts ever since you took it upon yourself to do the law's dirty work. Is that all, Riker? No, I've been kind of regretting my wasted youth. And now with a U.S. Marshal on his way down here to get me on a matter of a half a dozen bank holdups in the old days, you think it's possible that maybe you could get that lawman to think just a bit kindlier on me, Colonel? You heard me, Riker. I can't guarantee anything. <laughs> Spoken like my old Colonel. Count me in. I don't mind keeping that lawman waiting a bit. All right. Do any of you have any medical training or experience? I thought you'd get around to that question, Colonel. You have Stanhope? If seven years in the medical school of Columbia University is qualification, you must understand the importance of this detail and the fact that I can't order you to come. Oh, I do. And you can save your breath, Colonel, because I'm not volunteering. I swear by Apollo the physician, by all the gods and goddesses, that I will keep this oath. Into whatever house I enter, I will go into for the benefit of the sick, and will abstain from every act of corruption. <laughs> well, a man who has a, a noose already round his neck has very much to lose. I'm at your service, Colonel Custer. Thank you. Well, I'd rather be out there riding than just sitting around here sweating. Count me in. What's your name, soldier? Rod Tolby, ex-sergeant, 5th Cavalry, Company B, Colonel. What are you doing time for? Well, sir, there was these horses, and I'd had a snort or two, and, well, it seemed like a good idea at the time to trade them off for something better, like, say, some uh, beaver pelts. Trouble was, they was... Fifth Cavalry horses. I see. All right, Toby, you can come along. Now, wait a minute. With all the money you owe me, Toby, you got no right volunteering and go riding off to who knows where. My name is Bishop, Colonel. You can count me in. You got yourself another volunteer. Fine. We'll report to the quartermaster immediately. We'll ride in one hour. There's one more thing. I will tolerate no failures in performing your duty. If one man disobeys or tries to desert, I will shoot him without hesitation. Is that understood? Thieves, swindlers, out and out killers. You'll be lucky you're not murdered in your sleep, Custer. You certain you know what you're doing? Never more certain, sir. I think you're a fool. But good luck. Request permission to move out. Permission granted. Detail. Right turn. All right, let's move out.
day's start on us. They'll be riding hard if I know Red Wolf. And these trav while they're pulling, you gotta slow them down some. That supply wagon ain't gonna help us get there any quicker. Oh. There's a sick Pawnee down here. Stand off. Colonel, stay away from him. I'll give the order, Stanhope. Dr. Stanhope. Success of your entire expedition, Colonel, could very well depend on me. Very well, Doctor. See what you can do for him. Vaccinated boy? About six months ago. Good, I'm gonna need your help. Oh. Oh. I'm afraid we can't do anything for you, old man. There's something you can do for us and your people. A small bottle of the syringe in that bag, give it to me. I've been all through this country. And if I know engines and I do, they're gonna take the easiest way, which in this case happens to be the long way around. You know a shorter trail to the Pawnee camp? Uh, yeah, it's right through the Badlands. It's man-killing, and it's horse killing but it'll save you one full day. We need that day. We'll take it. Uh, there is one other little problem, Colonel. That trail there will lead us right through Sioux country, and there ain't a Sioux alive who wouldn't sell his mother for a chance to lift yellow hair's scalp. We'll take the short way. You ain't changed a bit, Colonel. Risking your men's lives don't mean a thing to you. How do you do it, Doc? How do I do what? Look at you. Neat as a pin. Me, I'm so dirty I can't stand myself. So am I, Riker. So am I. Tell me something, Doc. That woman over in Hayes City. You really kill her? <laughs> hey, it's funny, I, I've been thinking how big this country is, how lonely it is. Uh -huh. Lonely and quiet. Yeah, well, it won't be quiet long. Listen, Billy, you've still got time to change your mind and go on back. What's bothering you, Jeb? Well, nothing's bothering me. I just don't want to play nurse, made to no wet-eared kid. Listen, uh... Nobody asked you to play nursemaid, Jeb. Nobody asked you. Come on! Hey, Doc! There's that rabbit you've been looking for!
You're all right, Billy? I don't know, sir. All right? Yes, I, I'm, I'm not hurt. This wagon, it's all stove in. Heck, what'd you can on the horses? I'm, I'm sorry, Colonel, it was my fault, but the doc said that... Guilty, Colonel. Suppose you explain yourself, Trooper. When we reach the Pawnee encampment, we're gonna need some syrup, Colonel. To make it, I'll need a live animal. That's why I told the boy to keep on the lookout for a rabbit. Until we reach the Pawnee encampment, we're going to need some water very badly. I'm sorry, Jeb. Hmm. Oh, forget it, kid. It's not going to make any difference. Not to you or to me. Dismount. See to your horses, they have two more rough days ahead of them. We ain't exactly got a picnic ahead of us neither, you know. Your horse has to carry you and your supplies. Now you see that it's watered. Right after me. Your health, Colonel? What are you going to have your hands for, Colonel? Fighting all of us one by one. That's a job I'm handing over to you, Powell. Me? That's right. Because from now on, uh, you're acting corporal. And you're to see that my orders are carried out. I'm to see that your orders are carried out. Yeah, what makes you think so? Because you're a soldier. No matter what else you are. All right, Colonel. I'll uh, I'll be your corporal for as long as it suits me. Remove your hats. Now pour and water your horses. I said now. much time in taking you apart, Riker. Well, Custer doesn't know what taking a man apart really is. But he's gonna find out. I promise you that. Should do it. That uh, looks fine. All right, hand me those things. All right, now you take this fellow. Got him? Yeah. All right, now hold him nice and steady.
What do you want, Stanhope? You got the disease, Colonel. I've known it for hours. And still you're going on? That's right, Stanhope. We're all going on. It doesn't take long for smallpox to weaken a man and drag him down. When that happens, these men will turn on you like a pack of wolves. Are you going to run with the pack? I don't know, Colonel. Got it. What do you suppose is holding them up? Guts. Well, he ain't gonna last much longer. What then? Then I'll be in command. But don't get your hopes up, boy. That rabbit may save him yet. He's got it, hasn't he? How long will it be before this rabbit's of any use? They were from 24 to 96 hours. Any sign of water? Not yet. Don't expect doodle tomorrow. We'll mm -hmm. cross that ridge. I'm here for the night. No fires. Take over, Coco. Yes, ma'am. It's cold up here at night. you kid huh I'm gonna cut you real bad kid huh break it off Riker huh? <laughs> you get out of life again and I'm gonna stomp on you is that clear your things together. We're moving out of here. Moving out? You mean deserting? I mean we're moving out. Now, come on. Well, but water. Well, don't worry about it. I'll find water. You let that bunny rabbit go and get moving. Come on. Well, what about the colonel? Well, he's a dead man anyway. So our stay in or leaving won't change anything for him. Now, come on. I'm not going with you, Jeb. You can do as I say, boy. Not this time. You desert, you do it alone. That suits me just fine. I got no need for a green-eared punk kid like you with me anyway. <laughs> Don't do...
Never for mine, Jeb. I didn't expect you to say goodbye. I'm gonna leave. I won't stop to say goodbye. Right now, there's something I think you ought to take a look at. Come on, Colonel. the only path through these hills. That fire means soon. How far away are they? Oh, two, maybe three miles. Are they camped in the pass? No, no, I'd say about 200, 200 yards below it. Well, if no more than three miles away, we ought to be able to make it before daybreak if we start now. It's right over there. We can use their water. There I am. Yes. Get the water. Riker, I told you to break out the shovels. Time's running out, Paul. If you're pulling out, now's the time. Oh, I already figured that out for myself. You got a horse, water. With luck, you can get out of here. The record will show that you died here with me and the others. You'll never get another chance. Yeah, that's a fact. Well, 
Well, just uh, what are your orders, sir? You're second in command here, Corporal. You ought to see that this mission is carried out. Yes, sir. No matter what happens to me. And that's an order. Yes, sir. Billy. Billy, listen to me. When that rabbit kills over on his side, it's working. You break the skin on the colonel's arm with a knife, and you rub the infected part of the rabbit's belly across it. <coughs> oh, that, that's... Again, Jeb. It ain't your fault, your horse spooked. Go to sleep. to do it as soon as the rabbit keeled over. It's just the colonel's only chance. Oh, now ain't that something? I said to get away from him! You can't do it, Riker. Don't bet on it, boy. Because I can't think of a thing that I'd like better. Now you listen to me, boy. And you listen real good. Getting these bags of water gives us a chance. And by sticking together, we can all make it easy. No! Jeb! All you got waiting for you is a rope or a firing squad. What do you owe Custer here, this glorious who doesn't care how many men he sees get killed as long as he gets his name in the papers? You can't leave him here to die, Jeb. You're right, Billy. I'll put him out of his misery. Right now. Hold it right there, Riker. Are you gonna stop me from killing him, Jeb? Maybe not. But I guarantee that you'll follow right after him. Now put your gun away. Go ahead, Billy. as I know. Gotta get out of here. You're in no condition to ride. You're wrong. Help me on my horse. Oh. 
Mount up. We're moving out. for that vaccine to work, Billy. I don't know, Colonel. Stan Hope never said. Colonel! All right, Jeb. You like Custer so much, he can take you with him. the shovels. We'll camp here tonight. Corporal, Shh. there's a Sioux hunting party across the river. Now, if they go up the creek or down the creek, we're all right. But if they cross over, we're in a heap of trouble. Mount up. Here they come. Of us left. Just the three of us. Go in, you got your shovel? Yeah. Let's go. my brother. We reached you in time. I am not your brother, Yellowhair. Murderer of my people. Will you listen to me, Red Wolf? Did you listen to my people before you killed them? I didn't kill your people. They died of a disease we called smallpox. Just as you and all your people will die if you join them. Red Wolf is sick with the disease. And all his belongings must be burned. No. Yellow hair is lying. Half my men died trying to reach you in time. Why would you risk their lives and yours, Yellow Hair? Because the Pawnee Nation must survive. Red Wolf is not sick. He is strong as the buffalo. He will prove that Yellow Hair is a liar.
winning bet. Look at his face. There's the mark of death. There is truth in your words, Yellow Hair. The belongings, they will be burned, as you say. Will they die? Trooper Nixon. A very fine doctor gave his life to bring you this medicine. They will not die. everything I know. I'm sorry. Don't be. I lost, but Billy got a full pardon. He did pretty good at that. You take care of the kid for me, hmm? He'll make a good soldier yet. It ain't fair, Jeb. Billy. It just ain't fair. Billy. You're either a soldier or you ain't. Are you a soldier? Yeah, but... No buts. Just be quiet, smile, and say yes, sir. But... Yes, sir. So long, soldier. <laughs>